are now watching The Beach. Super Mario Brothers Wonder was just revealed, and to say the least, it looks absolutely incredible. It's the evolution of 2D Mario I've wanted for over a decade, with its new art style, creative mechanics, stellar looking level design, and just overall the game itself. It's the most excited I've been for a new Mario game since Super Mario Odyssey in 2017. Most of what made the Super Mario Bros. Wonder reveal outstanding was the game itself. But there's also another aspect to it. I'm genuinely surprised the Nintendo Switch is getting a new 2D Mario game made from the ground up. For one, it seemingly was laid into the Nintendo Switch's life. I say seemingly because that Nintendo Direct showcase the Switch is here to stay for at least another year or two. But also because I assume Nintendo thought the Nintendo Switch didn't need another 2D Mario game. 2019 was an interesting year. We got a Dehance port of New Super Mario Bros. U, ironically enough called New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. It's a stupid game that's objectively worse than the original on Wii U, which keep in mind, wasn't anything spectacular to begin with. But unfortunately, U Deluxe sold well. Very well. Wii U ports can sometimes downright replace new entries on the Switch. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a prime example, though at the very least, the DLC is essentially a new experience, especially with the excellent waves starting with Wave 3 and beyond. But as for Donkey Kong, most we've gotten is Funky Kong shining a surfboard with a banana, though this isn't always the case, considering examples like Pikmin 3 Deluxe being ported, but Pikmin 4 is still happening but the Wii U port effect wasn't the reason why I thought we wouldn't get a new 2D Mario on Switch. But why? Well, let's meet your maker. Shortly after New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, a Nintendo Direct happened that revealed Super Mario Maker 2. This game was a long time coming, and it was very exciting to see a sequel to what is my favorite Wii U game. I loved creating and sharing levels as well as playing them. The possibilities were nearly endless but they were approaching the end considering the rather limited tool set in the first game. But Super Mario Maker 2 seemingly had everything going for it. It had brand new world themes, a ton of new tools, a brand new game style, and the edge of being on a console that more than just the 13 million elite owned. But despite having everything going for it, Super Mario Maker 2 sort of faded away. You don't hear much discussion about the game, you don't see many videos on YouTube about it, and this was even present when the game was new to an extent, whereas Super Mario Maker on the other hand, remained relevant up until the very end of the Wii U, even beyond. It's not that uncommon for people to prefer Super Mario Maker 1 over 2, but it is a bit odd considering 2 objectively has far more tools and possibilities for level design. Considering there is the adamant claim stating the first game is better than Super Mario Maker 2, and how the game essentially became somewhat irrelevant, I wanted to revisit Super Mario Maker 2 to see what possibly could have gone wrong, considering that it had nearly everything going for it. After my revisit to Super Mario Maker 2, I was honestly very surprised, and there are many reasons why. So the question is, where could a Super Mario Maker 2 gone wrong, and why didn't it take off like the first game? Just like the original on Wii U, Super Mario Maker 2 is primarily about creating, sharing, and playing levels. Since the game is called Super Mario Maker 2, the most important aspect of the game is the level creator itself. Super Mario Maker is one of the very few Wii U games where the gamepad truly was beneficial to the experience. It was made for the Wii U, and is a perfect fit. This is because you can create levels on the gamepad, and can seamlessly go from creating them to testing them out on the TV and the process of making levels is intuitive and simple. You'd place level elements on the gamepad using the touchscreen, and you could alter them by dragging on other elements, such as super mushrooms and wings. You want a giant Goomba? Drag and drop a super mushroom onto him. Want a stack of flying Bowsers with wings and a fire piranha plant? Just stack the enemies and give them some wings. Want a red Koopa? Pull a Saki Survas and shake, 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 shake some more, and turn that green Koopa into a red one. Creating levels in Super Mario Maker was perfected in the first game, and that primarily had to do with the gamepad, and it's only possible with the second screen. As much as I want to forget about its existence, Super Mario Maker for Nintendo 3DS adapted the level creator from the original quite well. 
It was just a bit cramped due to the 3DS touchscreen being smaller than the one on the gamepad. The Nintendo Switch, on the other hand, has a touchscreen, but no option for dual screens. So because of that, the level creator had to be modified to accommodate for a single screen experience. Rather than having all the level elements available from a drop-down menu, they're categorized by type in a wheel. Not only is it to accommodate for the lack of a gamepad, but also to accommodate for the sheer amount of new tools to work with. In handheld mode, it's virtually identical to creating levels in the original since the Switch itself has a touchscreen. This is my preferred way to make levels, although I'd recommend getting a stylus for your Switch for extra precision while creating levels. The level creator is also designed to accommodate for controller use, meaning you no longer need to drag and drop wings and super mushroom onto enemies to change their form. All you have to do is hold the button until you can select between ways to alter their form. Pretty simple process. Placing elements with the controller is exactly what you'd expect. You use the controller to select elements, and then press the A button to place them, and you use the D-pad buttons to select between tools. Creating levels in Super Mario Maker 2 might be different, and not as seamless as the original, but by no means does that make it complicated. I will admit, making levels solely using a controller on the TV can be slightly cumbersome, but the solution is just undocking the Switch and creating levels using the touchscreen, and even then, you'll quickly get used to making levels with the controller if you desire. This is likely an aspect where some would think the original Super Mario Maker would reign supreme, and in some ways, the level creator is better in the original. But honestly, I find the trade-off to be a non-issue. If making levels on the Wii U was a 10 out of 10, then on Switch, it would be 9 out of 10. Although it would have been nice to have the option to use another Switch system as a gamepad, or having compatibility with the mouse, just to have additional options. Although creating levels isn't as seamless in Maker 2, the amount of new tools completely outweigh any of the cons with the new level creator. Super Mario Maker has the Mario Essentials, the basics, but Super Mario Maker 2 goes above and beyond. The first new tool Nintendo wanted you to know about were the slopes. Slopes were a highly requested tool in Super Mario Maker, and they allow for more organic and seamless level design. They also make levels look far nicer as well. There are also a ton of new enemies. All the enemies from the first game return, but there are new additions such as spikes, monty moles, bonsai bills, boom booms, and yes, even all seven of the Koopalings. Even more! Some of them were added in updates, but even at launch, there were a lot of new enemies. My favorite is easily the Angry Sun. Not only is it cool seeing such a rare but memorable enemy here, but the design in the new Super Mario Bros. U style is nothing short of amazing. For as bland and unoriginal as New Super Mario Bros. U is, it's almost like a fever dream seeing an angry son this out there in the style of that game. There are also more power-ups this time around, most of the ones from the first game along with some new ones too. Two of them are unlockable in the game's story mode, but most are available by default. There are two notable omissions though. Unfortunately, the amiibo costumes from the first game don't return. These allowed Mario and Super Mario Bros. style to take on the look of another character after eating a mystery mushroom. It's a real shame they didn't return. There were so many amazing levels themed around mystery mushroom costumes. I even made one based on Pac-Land. Not having the mystery mushroom return is the only disappointment about Maker 2 so far. But unfortunately, another power-up got the Karibo shoe. Gone is also the weird mushroom, which turned Mario skinny and made him jump higher. I can honestly understand the lack of amiibo costumes. It's not every day you get the license for Baby Metal to be in your Mario game, but there's no reason why the Weird Mushroom didn't return. Maybe it's because of how freakish Weird Toadette would've looked? I don't know. But even Super Mario Maker for Nintendo 3DS had it, even though that game also omitted the Mystery Mushroom. And unfortunately, another power-up got a downgrade. In the original Super Mario Maker, scanning the 30th anniversary 8-bit Mario amiibo would give you a big mushroom for the Super Mario Bros. style, essentially acting similar to the Mega Mushroom, but adding a CRT filter, and all the enemies flat out worship Mario. But in Maker 2, that Mario cult is unfortunately gone. The big mushroom still functions the same, but it's missing that fun level of flair. The lack of the mystery mushroom, weird mushroom, and the lack of the big mushroom's effects are disappointing, 
but they're the only notable omissions in what is otherwise a far superior level creator, and we've only scratched the surface. Super Mario Maker 2 has many new level themes. Desert, snow, jungle, and sky themes are present for every game style. These are Mario staples, and it's great to have them here, but there are also night variations that add a new gimmick to each theme. A desert level at night will have a sandstorm, whereas a sky level at night will change the physics to feel like space. Night levels will sometimes change enemy or item behavior, such as having Goombas and Wigglers float and replacing 1-Up Mushrooms with Rotten Mushrooms, which act similar to Poison Mushrooms, but actively chase after Mario and friends, meaning that these mushrooms are way more dangerous. Meanwhile, the angry sun becomes the friendly moon and takes out enemies if you can grab him. What a friend. While some themes are notably missing such as a beach, mountain, or lava themes, there is still a good amount of variety with the night versions allowing for some very creative levels. Overall, the new themes are great, along with having the night variations. But I do have a few gripes with them. I can understand replacing the angry sun with the happy moon. After all, don't we all need a break from being pissed off? But why is the Rotten Mushroom exclusive to the night levels? And another thing with the night levels is that the background remains the same for nearly every theme. It's a very pretty starry night, but they could have done more with the backgrounds, although that dives more into the presentation of the game. Speaking of diving, I don't like how you can add water or poison to ground levels, but only in the jungle theme. Water should have been a tile that you could place, and not part of a level theme itself. Super Mario Maker 2 already added a ton in terms of new features, but the big new feature we have yet to tackle is the brand new Super Mario 3D World game style. Despite being a 3D Mario game, Super Mario 3D World is a game style in the game. The levels you make are in 2D, but considering how 3D World played like a 2D Mario game, it adapts incredibly well. Unlike the other game styles, the Super Mario 3D World style is separate and cannot be converted to other styles. This is because it includes a different tool set and slightly different gameplay. Mario and friends have their moves from Super Mario 3D World, but they're translated into 2D. Even the long jump and power-ups like the cat suit are present as well. Prior to Super Mario Bros. Wonder, this is what I considered to be the best game style for any 2D Mario game, and visually, it looks beautiful as well. Almost like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, but for Mario. But unfortunately, the 3D World style isn't as fleshed out as I would have liked. Yes, it is different than the main four styles, but not that different. Having the option to convert from the 3D World style and vice versa would have been nice even if it required a bit of level modification afterwards. And that's an obstacle you'd encounter anyway in the main styles. Let's say you made a level designed around the raccoon suit you'd have to modify it after changing it to the Super Mario Bros. theme, considering that style doesn't have the raccoon suit, and the 3D World style is also missing the night versions. Don't get me wrong, I love the Super Mario 3D World style, but it could have been fleshed out more. Creating levels in Super Mario Maker 2 is a major improvement from the original. There are far more tools you can use, far more themes, and even more possibilities. There are some sequels Nintendo has released on the Switch I feel are insignificant in terms of new features, but Super Mario Maker 2 is absolutely deserving of its 2 moniker. It added a lot. With this much new content and near endless possibilities, I'm having a difficult time understanding why Super Mario Maker 2 didn't have as big of an impact as it should have. Creating levels is better than ever before, but playing them is also an important factor. But before getting into the playing aspect, the presentation is also a crucial aspect of a game, and anyone who tells you that graphics don't matter are probably a Pokemon fanboy. One of the coolest aspects of Super Mario Maker is the amount of charm that it had. The level editor itself had a ton of personality, and there were a ton of fun easter eggs you'd find such as messing with the letters in the logo, and even random flies that sent you into the fly swatting minigame. But in Super Mario Maker 2, they flat out said, EAT THE FLIES! It doesn't have the weird quirky stuff the first game did. And yes, sadly the fly swatting minigame is gone. This is something some might be really irked by, and while I do miss the charm, it's not a major issue, because the presentation of the game still manages to be great, albeit in a more traditional sense. There are five game styles, all doing an excellent job recreating the games they're based on, 
Although jumping from Super Mario 3D World to the new Super Mario Bros. U style really goes to show how lifeless new Super Mario Bros. U looks in comparison. One of the highlights is seeing enemies and items that weren't present in the original games recreated for that style. You'll see a lot of new enemies in the Super Mario Bros. style, and Nintendo did a phenomenal job recreating them to fit that game's style. Everything retains a sprite limit from the NES, giving it the four palette limitation, making it feel very authentic. And the other styles do a great job adapting sprites to their styles too, albeit with a few exceptions. I'm not a fan of Bowser's Super Mario World design. However, I feel like I'm one of the few people on Earth who just adores the new Super Mario Bros. U Angry Sun. It's actually based on Aztec culture, and even though it looks bizarre compared to how the Angry Sun usually looks, it has its own charm. And when it swoops down, there's an Aztec-like sound effect to go with them. I see the Mario developers really resonated with their vacation to Mexico. Music, on the other hand, is another interesting aspect. Some themes weren't present in the original games, or didn't have an original composition to go with them. What Maker 2 did was bring Koji Kondo to compose new tracks, based on the new themes, and how they'd fit into the original games. And they all feel right at home. Some of my favorites are the Super Mario Bros. Desert and Snow themes, and the Super Mario World Jungle theme. While making levels, a relaxing rendition of the theme you'll be making will be playing in the background, similar to the original, and this time, they're better than ever. Super Mario 3D World style specifically has an acapella thing going on, and it sounds great. If there's only one area of the music I'd have to critique, it's with the nighttime levels. All of them have the same music box sound to them, and while they sound fine, there's no variety. Thankfully, you can add custom sound effects, some including additional music, but more variety would have been appreciated. Sound design is also stellar. As I mentioned before, you can add sound effects in the level creator, bringing a lot more flair to the levels you make, and they even incorporate visual effects most of the time, giving them that extra level of flair, but even the sound effects sound great. This goes more into the creative aspect rather than the presentation, but I would have loved to have a music maker as well. It's a real shame Super Mario Maker doesn't allow you to make custom music, unless it's an auto-run level. This is something that needs to be present in Super Mario Maker 3, but as it stands, the presentation is excellent in Super Mario Maker 2. It might lack a level of charm the original had, but it still has a stellar presentation that does a great job adapting to the different game styles. Super Mario Maker 2 has two primary modes where you'll play levels. There's a course world where you'll play user-created levels, but there's also a story mode, including 120 levels made by Nintendo themselves. That's essentially a new 2D Mario game made by Nintendo included in the package. This is why I thought we wouldn't get Super Mario Bros. Wonder. What's interesting is that Super Mario Maker for Nintendo 3DS included a similar mode with over 100 levels made by Nintendo, and that was the only redeeming aspect of the game. But having it return in a game I actually enjoy playing? Well, let's see what it's like. There's actually a story to tie everything together. Mario was enjoying a nice Saturday afternoon, only to find out that Undoo Dog accidentally destroys Peach's castle after the Toads likely spent the past year and a half building it. You ever worked on a project that ended up getting deleted after days or weeks of hard work? Mario is such a hero, he doesn't want the poor Toads to go through that pain, so he offers to do the jobs to restore and build Peach's castle back to its former glory. These jobs are in the form of levels, varying in terms of difficulty. Have a big job to do? This reminds me of that time a puppet gave me helpful advice on how to tackle big jobs. Break up the jobs so they're small. Break up the jobs so they're small. Little by little you'll do them all. Sit in front when you're at school. Take good notes, write assignments down. The jobs you complete in story mode, unlike far too many jobs out there in the real world, are actually fun. What these levels often do is center around a specific mechanic or course element. Not only does it get you familiar with the elements, but it showcases their full potential. Some of my favorite levels included dodging the angry sun and floating in the night sky with Red Yoshi. These jobs can also help inspire you to create your own level design. Not only are they a blast to play, 
and are well designed, but they get you familiar with the game's tools. The story mode also has a cute overworld where you get to talk to various toads and even characters like Undo Dog and Sound Frog. Not only do we have an excellent level creator, but an excellent story mode as well. So what could possibly be the problem? Wait just a minute. Perhaps it could be playing levels. After all, Nintendo's Achilles heel has a name. It's called online. The way you play user-created levels are in the course world, and there are a few ways to do so. Rather than the 100 Mario challenge from the original, we now have the endless Mario challenge. You're given a set amount of lives to begin with, and your goal is to beat as many levels as possible based on difficulty. This is an area where the original excels. The 100 Mario challenge gave you a set number of levels to clear, and after beating all of them, you won the 100 Mario challenge. There was the satisfaction of having an end goal, and you even got rewarded with an amiibo costume. But in an endless challenge, there's not that same sense of satisfaction considering there's no definitive end. Although it's not a deal breaker, I will admit, I do miss the 100 Mario Challenge, and it would have been nice to have the option for it in addition to Endless Mario Challenge. Another aspect that definitely could have been improved upon is searching for levels. Want to play a specific level? You can't search for the title of it. You have to manually put in the level code. Do I even need to explain why friend codes and level codes reek in comparison to just names? Imagine wanting to watch a YouTube video, but you couldn't just search it up you'd have to type in the code to find the video you want to watch. Perhaps this was a detriment to the game's relevance? No, because the original Super Mario Maker also had the level code system in place and remained popular up until the end of the Wii U, even beyond. But in addition to creating and sharing levels, Super Mario Maker 2 allows you to essentially make your very own 2D Mario game with the World Maker. This feature was added in the final major update, and it's a pretty significant addition. Creating a super world is very similar to creating a level. You are able to select a theme, customize the level paths, and even customize the world terrain. You're able to have up to 8 worlds along with 40 levels, and you can upload them to the course world so anyone can play them. Many players have created super worlds essentially making their own Super Mario games. A fan created his very own Super Mario Bros. 5, which was designed to feel like a game designed by Nintendo, with excellent and creative level design. I even worked on my own Super World being a remake of the classic bootleg game, Mario 3 Around the World. I put the project on hiatus, but I'm considering either resuming it or starting a new Super World in the style of how I was remixing that game. Creating and playing levels is an absolute blast, but this time around, it's not just the solo experience, because Super Mario Maker 2 also has multiplayer. There are quite a few multiplayer modes. There's a traditional co-op introduced in New Super Mario Bros. Wii with up to four players. Mario, Luigi, Blue Toad, and Toadette are the playable characters, which I found interesting. It seems Nintendo can't make up their mind on whether to put Buckenberry or Ala Gold in the spotlight, Personally, I'm more of a Buckenberry lad. It's pretty interesting that Toadette is playable rather than a la Gold. I know EB is thrilled having his favorite character playable in Super Mario Maker 2. So far, everything about Super Mario Maker 2 has been pretty great, and although I criticize the system of using level codes, it really isn't that big of a deal, and you'll always find quality levels to play. But unfortunately, the multiplayer is where Super Mario Maker 2 starts to derail. Although, will it derail as much as the toxic gossip train of misinformation? <laughs> Local multiplayer works like it has before. If you're familiar with New Super Mario Bros. co-op, it's similar in Super Mario Maker 2. Conceptually, it sounds fine, but considering Super Mario Maker 2 is largely focused on player-created levels, most levels just aren't optimized well for multiplayer. You can find levels that are compatible or even designed for co-op, but it's not exactly ideal. And guess what? You can only play levels you've downloaded or made. So if you want to play the Endless Mario Challenge in multiplayer, you can't do that. And you want to know what levels would have been really fun in co-op? The story mode jobs. Nintendo made those levels and they're way more suited for multiplayer. But unfortunately, you can only play story mode in single player. You can also create levels with a friend in multiplayer. This sounds like a cool idea, but the only control option is using a Joy-Con sideways for goodness knows what. It's a neat feature to have, 
but is hindered by the controls. This is a mode I really didn't dive into, so that's why I'm indifferent towards it. But the local multiplayer could have been so much better. You've ever noticed that there's always some sort of bizarro caveat when it comes to Super Mario Maker 2's multiplayer? You can play local co-op, but are limited to levels you've created or downloaded from the course world. You can make levels with a friend, but are forced to use a single Joy-Con for the controls, because that always works out, right Super Mario Party? But this is only accounting for local multiplayer, because Super Mario Maker 2 also has online multiplayer. Online multiplayer has two modes, cooperative and competitive. The co-op is pretty much the same, but it's better in theory since each player has their own screen. But competitive puts players against each other to finish the level first, and by doing so, you can increase your player ranking, earning new costumes for your me. In concept, once again, it sounds like a blast. But get this, although this is no longer the case, this is so absurd, I have to bring it up. When the game launched, it had online multiplayer, but you couldn't even play it with your friends. That's like if Apple released an iPhone that could only make calls to random strangers, though considering they removed the headphone jack, I wouldn't put it past them. But the fact of the matter is, that is absolutely ridiculous, and the community let Nintendo know how insane that decision was. A few months later, they added proper online multiplayer with friends. This is exactly why criticism and feedback is so important when it comes to games. If the Pokemon community let us criticize their beloved Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, perhaps we could get competent games again? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? But let's see how the online multiplayer works. Despite adding the groundbreaking feature of being able to play online with your friends, Super Mario Maker 2 has some of the worst online multiplayer I've ever experienced. When it works, it works okay, but more often than not, it'll lag, and in a game about precise platforming, lag is an absolute deal breaker. A bit of lag is bad, but it can at least be tolerated but oftentimes, levels will become slideshow levels of laggy, making it not even worth playing a majority of the time. I thought Super Smash Bros. Ultimate had bad online, but Maker 2 is even worse. Local multiplayer can be serviceable, but online multiplayer is an absolute bust, and it's a real shame. I know Nintendo is capable of better, Super Mario 3D World actually has decent online multiplayer for example, but it's completely unacceptable and it's borderline unplayable. So far I've established Super Mario Maker 2 is incredible for making and playing levels, and it does a great job handling the lack of a gamepad and introduced a ton of new features, and although online multiplayer is an absolute bust, local multiplayer can be fun, even if it's a bit cumbersome, and the story mode essentially serves as a new 2D Mario game. So what's the verdict? I can say with uttermost certainty that Super Mario Maker 2 is not just marginally, but significantly better than the original. Sure, amiibo costumes are gone, which is a bummer, but all the new tools and features completely outweigh the cons, and while multiplayer isn't well thought out, Super Mario Maker 2, for me at least, is a mostly solo experience anyway, so I consider multiplayer to pretty much be a bonus. But considering it does nearly everything right, and added so much, what the hell went wrong? How did this game not take off? Super Mario Maker 2 is a creative game that thrives on its online community, and considering that, you would think Nintendo would have updated the game frequently. Things such as adding new tools, hosting events and contests, or even releasing new levels on a frequent basis that could promote their other games, like making a Luigi's Mansion inspired level to coincide with Luigi's Mansion 3. But the minute Nintendo released Super Mario Maker 2, it just as quickly stopped getting support. There was only one major update that introduced new tools and super worlds, and there was an additional update before that added the Link power-up. And outside of a few levels Nintendo put out, that was it for Super Mario Maker 2. Super Mario Maker 2 is very much a finished game, and released with an ample amount of content. But there is so much missed potential that could have been fulfilled if Nintendo gave the game proper support. The Super Mario 3D World style is under a category called Extra Game Styles. Styles is plural, unless we're talking about this styles, so you would think another extra style would have been added, right? 
It's speculated Super Mario Bros. 2 would have been the second extra style, but a full-on Mario 2 theme got scrapped for unknown reasons, hence why we only got the Super Mario Bros. 2 power-up. The tool selection is excellent in Maker 2, but it easily could have benefited by having additional enemies or power-ups, and although I don't find the lack of amiibo costumes to be a huge deal, Nintendo released new costumes frequently in the original that kept players engaged with the game. Something as simple as a new costume every week could have gone a long way. Super Mario Maker 2 is an interesting case compared to Nintendo's other service games. Why did I despise the Mario sports games that got quote-unquote free updates that added so-called additional content, while well, I feel Super Mario Maker 2's main problem was that it didn't get updates. Here's the marquee difference. Let's take a look at Mario Strikers Battle League. That game released with 10 characters, one stadium with a few different color variations, and no additional modes. There was nothing there, and the free updates weren't additional content. They consisted of content that should have been there in the game to begin with. And ironically enough, the free updates didn't even add new content, just more characters and new shades of grass. Super Mario Maker 2, on the other hand, is more similar to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. It launched with an ample amount of content, and mostly felt complete outside of the lack of online multiplayer with friends. When Super Mario Maker released, it was a novel concept. It was a phenomenon despite the Wii U selling poorly, but after four years, novelty simply wasn't enough to keep the game relevant and frequent support was necessary in order for Maker 2 to maintain relevancy, but the updates were too far apart, too infrequent, and Nintendo pretty much did nothing to put Maker 2 in the spotlight. Super Mario Maker 2 isn't a dead game by any means. It still has an active community making incredible levels, but it could have been so much more. I'm hoping Nintendo learns from their mistakes with 2 for Super Mario Maker 3, but despite the unfortunate state it ended up in, it didn't impact my enjoyment of the game. Super Mario Maker 2 is a case where the disappointment has nothing to do with the game itself, just the fact Nintendo didn't go all the way with it. And with that said, Super Mario Maker 2 gets the elusive ranking of Platinum Treasure. To this day, it's my second most played Nintendo Switch game, only behind Super Mario Odyssey. It's truly one of the best 2D Mario experiences, and even when Super Mario Bros. Wonder releases this October, I'll still be going back to Super Mario Maker 2. Even though Super Mario Maker 2 is 2D Mario at its core, the creative aspect simply can't be replicated with a traditional 2D Mario game, and fans will continue to make amazing levels for years to come. But Nintendo, if you're making a creative game like Super Mario Maker 2, or even something like Flipnote Studio, you gotta treat it like a creative game and not just a one and done thing. Because with frequent updates and frequent support, I guarantee you Super Mario Maker 2 would have taken off a lot more than it did. This could have been Nintendo's answer to Minecraft, but as it stands, it is still an excellent experience I'd recommend for any fans of Nintendo or Mario. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, and as always, keep calm and da-da on.